Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wayne Drinkward, Harvey Mudd class of 1973 and chair of the Board of Trustees. It's my privilege to welcome you to the 60th commencement of Harvey Mudd College. The commencement's now in session. Before we begin, I'd ask that you stand as we listen to the national anthem as presented to us by members of the graduating class. You may be seated. Thank you. We're gathered here today to celebrate the com completion of a rigorous academic curriculum administered by the faculty and successfully completed by the class of 2018. But before we start, they wouldn't be here alone. They wouldn't be here without the support of their families and friends who are gathered here. So I'd ask that the Graduates, to be, please stand and give all of those who have supported you a standing ovation. Thank you. And now it's my privilege to ask to the podium the president of Harvey Mudd College, Dr. Maria Klebe. So the very first and most important thing is to welcome our class of 2018. And then let us also recognize our trustees, administration, faculty, alumni, staff, and students, and parents for their involvement in HMC, which makes today's ceremony possible. I also want to thank Don Gross from the class of 1961 who joined us today in celebration of our 60th commencement and a warm welcome to all the mothers in our audience. Now the first thing we always do 
in our commencement ceremony is to award the Henry T. Mudd Prize. In 1992, the college became, began a tradition of recognizing during commencement one person who's contributed greatly to generations of students and to Harvey Mudd College. The first recipient of the Henry T. Mudd Prize was President Emeritus, Professor Emeritus, and Trustee Emeritus, Joseph Platt. By tradition, the selection of the awardee is done in secret, and the recipient is not informed until commencement, and in fact, until a couple of seconds from now. <laughs> the honoree will receive a $6,000 award, 3,000 of which is designated for use within the college at the discretion of the awardee. The citation reads, for his exemplary service to Harvey Mudd College and to our students for nearly 16 years, during which he served with dedication, kindness, compassion, and collegiality, for his selfless dedication to the mission quality and overall good of this institution, for his supportive leadership both in and outside of the classroom, and for his dedication to the intellectual development, emotional well-being, and all-round success of each student. And I do realize at this point, the only clue you have is it's a faculty member, and it's a male faculty member. So that's narrowed it down a whole lot. For his ongoing contributions to his field, particularly through his collaborations in mathematical ecology, for his active outreach to the community, involving much needed engagement with K-12 math education outreach programs, co-founding the Pathways program and creating the Math Demo Lab featured on NPR Science Friday. For his also serving the college as the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs from 2010 to 2015, then later assuming the responsibilities of the role of Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students in 2015 for his tireless efforts to strengthen and grow the division of student affairs and to provide improved services for all students, especially in areas of diversity and inclusion, community engagement, health and wellness, and leadership. John Jacobson, also known as Dean Jakes, In 12 years, never have I been unable to complete <laughs> reading the announcement. <laughs> John Jacobson, also known as Dean Jakes, Professor of Mathematics, is hereby designated as the 2018 recipient of the Henry T. Mudd Prize. Congratulations, John. <laughs> Thank you, I am very honored by this recognition. Uh, I particularly want to thank my colleagues and my, the last three years, the staff colleagues who have grown so close to my heart and I value so much everything they do. And I want to say congrats to the, to the class of 2018. Wow. Uh, times like this I'm reminded of a Lord Buckley quote. Lord Buckley said, people are the true flowers of life. And it has been a most precious pleasure to have temporarily strolled through your garden. So congratulations, grads, and, and thank you very much.
Our next presenter is Senior Ramita Kondipuri. Ramita has grown up in San Jose, Bangalore, and Singapore. She is majoring in engineering. During her time at MUD, she has been an Engman Fellow in Bioengineering, Sontag Dorm President, and worked in the admissions office as a social media blogger, tour guide, and senior intern. She's a connoisseur of fine dark chocolate, I didn't know that, <laughs> and baked goods. After MUD, she will be joining a law firm in the Bay Area as a patent engineer. Please join me in welcoming Ramita to the stage. Welcome to Harvey Mudd College. We are a math and science focused, liberal arts, undergraduate only institution where we pride ourselves on the quality and quantity of our work. <laughs> Today we'll be taking a tour of the campus, exploring every wart embossed structure and emotional peak and trough. Please feel free to stop me at any point with questions or concerns. So we're starting off in the year 2014. Orientation is monopoly themed. Does anyone even remember what that means? You are randomly shuffled into orientation groups whose members you perhaps rarely talk to anymore. But you do vividly remember the trepid excitement, the belief that you can become someone new. President Clave knows your name and where you're from, and your parents are very impressed. A couple of weeks go by. Everyone tells you how lucky you are to have all your classes in the brand new Shanahan Center for Teaching and Learning. <laughs> it's gray and sort of modular looking, but you decide it has a retro cool feel to it. <laughs> you are, however, confused as to why the Shan second floor east and west corridors don't connect, and so you let your dreams of jumping across subside. Special Relativity Lecture is really cool, and you really want to be able to understand all of it, but it's ever so slightly out of your grasp. Time dilation and three-fifths the speed of light are terms you can use intelligibly in a sentence, but you hope no one asks you for more. <laughs> Upperclassmen keep repeating, pass, fail, frosh, until it blends into the background, so on days that you do just want to watch Mad Men or attend a West party, although remember there are no fires back in our day, you tune back in and you hope that your chance at a high pass isn't eliminated tonight. Spring semester 2015. You venture into Olin Science Center many times a week, Bio 52 office hours. As you go up the elevator one floor, you think about the mice in the building, flies, bees, Someone once told me that Prof. Adolph and Prof. Bush smile rainbows and unicorns, and I can't unsee it. <laughs> you meet your HSA advisor. You find your non-math, non-science sanity check. Prof. Balsero gives you many much-needed hugs. You learn that econ is not a STEM field. You repeat this to yourself, no matter how strange it seems. Do you remember the amazement when you learned that the rectangular prisms outside of Shan were skylights? Just as you realize mechanics may become a problem for you, community shell explodes. Where is our work-life balance? Making your E4 hammer handle for the third time, you realize in disbelief, college is really hard. <laughs> You sign up for summer math, or you don't. Perhaps you did both. Speaking from experience, if you sign up but leave within 72 hours, you're eligible for a full refund. <laughs> Fall semester 2015. All the engineering profs are really excited for this last session of old STEMs. As evidenced by Prof Sputes' renditions of High School Musical, 
Prof. Clark's Canadian accent, <laughs> you feel this incredible urgency to slip to declare your major, as though the inspiration for your decision will slip away if you don't capture it at that exact moment. You finally find the library, and you make a commitment to attending pits or brunches on Saturdays for toasted bagels and cream, jalapeno cream cheese, that's important. <laughs> Spring semester 2016. The first time that engineers are really spending all their time in all of Parsons. But non-engineers stop by for tea and coffee too. But really, everyone is spending way too much time in labs. E80, PCHEM, Modern, Bio, CS70, I'm sorry if I'm missing any. But we all know sleep is a hot commodity. I'll come clean. While I was trying to fend for myself, I couldn't handle a flask of rabbit corneal fibroblast cells. And I'm sorry, Prof. Forward. <laughs> the fall 2016, spring 2017 academic year. A hard one. Tristan and Willie pass away. I learned what it means for MUD to really care. What it means to be a part of a community. But school goes on, a concept I found really hard to reconcile with, even though I didn't know either of them well. The Wabash Report is released. By this point, there's so much sadness, confusion, uncertainty, pain, suspended school. But once again, we realize we're in it together. People abroad are really thankful to be gone, but school does go on. You still have an E85 final. That's the best kind of normal that can exist. Fall semester 2017. It doesn't really sink in. Grad school essays, job applications. It's like reliving senior year of high school with more finality. You get a few more lackluster grades. You like to think you're immune these days, but it stings your ego a tiny bit every time you look at your transcript. Spring semester 2018. Think of a time when you were in the middle of a problem set it's 3 a.m., you're hungry, but Jay's is closed, you want to give up, but you can't afford to let the homework grade go. Can you picture the moment I'm talking about? Now move forward a couple minutes. You're so angry and bitter at the homework, but you look around at the people with you in the room who are quiet now with mind-numbing sleep encroaching. And do you remember feeling gratitude <laughs> Love, support, friendship. I love the people here. I love stopping by my friend's suites after class to talk. I love going upstairs to use their bathroom at midnight when mine is taken. I love our numerous group chats, the countless unflattering pictures, and all the inside jokes. I love all our professors. Prof Dado answers emails at 2 a.m. Prof. Orwin themes her summer research, and Prof. Dodds memorized all of our names the first day of CS5 freshman year. I'll really miss the admissions and financial aid office, a place I've spent so much of my time for the last four years, and the reason we are all here today. All the staff who work at offices at Platt, The Hawk, Cafe, Jays, and FNM who make sure our lives can be as comfortable as they can be. I'll miss the five C's and the peace you feel when you're walking down to Pomona and you look back at the mountains. We've gone through so much. We felt pain and sacrifice, some of us more than others, in more ways than I can comprehend. At the start of the summer of freshman year, I packed my bags really efficiently because I thought I was leaving and never coming back. I wanted to stop and cry during the 12th hour of a problem set way too many times. I've failed many tests. And thank you to all our advisors for dealing with those academic advisories. I want to continue to acknowledge this adversity, which isn't unique to me at all, even while I stand up here and think about how much I love Harvey Mudd College. I think when you can still love a piece of a place so deeply, even though you've been through the most grueling of times, you realize we're strong. You realize we can do anything. And with that, I want to say congratulations. We made it through Harvey Mudd College. 
and we're the class of 2018. Thank you. Ramita, thank you so much. That was amazing. And I think you are speaking for all of us about how much we love Harvey Med College, even though I think all of us have been through some very trying times over the last couple of years. But that hasn't changed our love for the college. It has just increased it. I'm now delighted to introduce today's commencement speaker, astrophysicist Nergis Mavovala. Nergis is the associate head of the Department of Physics and the Curtis and Kathleen Marble Professor of Astrophysics at MIT. Her research uses the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, or maybe LIGO for short, to detect gravitational waves following astronomical events. She was a leading member of the team that in early 2016 made history when they detected gravitational waves from the collision of two black holes. The results of their experiment confirmed the final prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity and introduced a completely new method for observing the universe. In addition to her work on gravitational wave detectors, Nergis has conducted pioneering experiments on exotic quantum states of light, as well as later laser cooling and trapping of large objects, which makes it possible to study the weirdness of quantum mechanics in human scale systems. I love that, the weirdness of quantum mechanics. <laughs> Nergis received her bachelor's degree from Wellesley College and her PhD from MIT. She was a postdoctoral fellow and research scientist at Caltech before joining the physics faculty at MIT in 2002. She has received numerous honors, including a MacArthur Genius Award in 2010. <coughs> she was elected to the National Academy of Science and named a Carnegie Great Immigrant in 2017 and received a Wings World Quest Women of Discovery Award in April of this year. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Professor Nergis Mavrovala. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon, President Klawe. Good afternoon, faculty and staff and trustees. And most of all, guest of honor, good afternoon to you, the class of 2018 at Harvey Mudd College. And let's not forget the other very important people out there. Hello, parents and families. OK. And to all the mothers among us, where would we be without you? Extinct. <laughs> so a very happy Mother's Day as well. Okay. <laughs> so graduates, congratulations. You did it. You are graduating. Parents, congratulations. You paid for it. Faculty and staff, congratulations. You've walked the journey with yet another class. I want to acknowledge at this moment that it takes a whole village to graduate a student, so thank you to everyone involved. Now, as you heard, I'm from MIT. For those of you who pay any attention to MIT, you might think that MIT aspires to be the Harvey Mudd of the East. <laughs> and for good reason. Mudd captured the Caltech cannon 20 years before MIT managed to do it. <laughs> Warts have been an architectural 
architectural landmark at Mudd since its inception. It took MIT decades to come up with an affectionate name for one of its buildings. We have a three-dimensional um, uh, cubic building that we call the Waffle House. Okay. But as is endemic of our time and very important to recognize, in your graduating class at Mudd this year, more women than men will receive degrees in computer science and physics. <laughs> that beats all the national averages and certainly the numbers at MIT. Once again at MIT, we will have to work hard to catch up with Harvey Mudd. Being here, I'm reminded of my own graduation from Wellesley, a college a little bit bigger than Harvey Mudd, a liberal arts college just outside of Boston. At that time, I was among the students who protested our commencement speaker, the late Barbara Bush. I hope none of you protested my being here. <laughs> But Mrs. Bush gave a compelling commencement address, I must admit. admit. But the hundreds of women at Wellesley College in, in the class of 1990 did not want to hear from the wife of a U.S. president. We wanted to hear from a U.S. president herself. <laughs> While we haven't broken that highest glass ceiling yet, here at MUD, President Klawe and colleagues are doing their part to shift the needle ever closer to equity in our society. MUD has become a national model for increasing the participation and inclusion of women and students of color and other underrepresented groups in engineering and science. I dream of the day when there will be a scientista in the White House, and I look to you with the highest of hopes. Now, I believe I stand before you today because of my role in a major scientific discovery. I could not think of any other reason why you would have me here. So for nearly three decades, I have worked on the search for gravitational waves, and I've had the incredible privilege of being part of the discovery team, along with hundreds of collaborators. Gravitational waves were predicted by Einstein over 100 years ago. They are emitted when stars collide but they are also very faint. They're so faint that Einstein himself dismissed them as having no practical purpose. They are so faint that it took us decades to have the technologies sufficiently sensitive to detect them. In 2015, when the first gravitational waves were observed, their detection changed how we humans observe the universe. It did. For millennia, The universe has been a movie playing out before human eyes and over the last few centuries playing out before increasingly more powerful telescopes. But we've always used light to look out into the universe. Until now, it was a silent movie. It involved only our sense of sight. With the discovery of gravitational waves, we have finally enhanced that silent movie with sound. We can now hear signals from objects in the sky due to their gravity hence the name gravitational waves. We have begun to detect some of nature's most spectacular audiovisual displays, and we even observe objects that give off no light. We have opened a new window into the universe. To detect gravitational waves, the discovery instruments, called LIGO, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> had to measure the motion of mirrors a thousand times smaller than the size of a single proton. Let me say that again, in case you didn't catch it. A thousand times smaller than the size of a single proton. It was hard. <laughs> I'm proud to say that I've spent the bulk of my career on, in, on designing and building the experiment that was capable of such mind-boggling precision. But it wasn't always so. I first heard about this crazy measurement and the quest to make it as a new graduate student in the doctoral program uh, in physics at MIT. I thought the idea was insane. I thought it could never work. 
but the possibility of being part of such an unimagined discovery was too compelling for, to not give it a try. Of course, I did not know that try would take nearly three decades. We detected our first signals in 2015, 25 years after I started my PhD. Thankfully, my PhD did not take quite that long. <laughs> now I have to confess something to you. If I had known it would have taken that long and been that hard from the outset, I might not have embarked on this quest. I def definitely didn't plan the trajectory that life took me on. So let me take this moment to share with you and reassure you, if you haven't planned out the rest of your lives on this, your graduation day, that's okay. It's good even. And it may help to realize that although this big happy day is called commencement, it really isn't the start of something new and scary. Think of it as just a particularly happy, fun day in a journey you've already been making. It's part of a project you've been doing almost since you were born and will continue to do your personal education. Okay. And, and I bet you your education began long before you arrived at MAD. Certainly for me, and perhaps some of it wasn't even in school, and certainly for me that was the case. So one of my very formative experiences that led me towards a career in science was repairing bicycles in Karachi, Pakistan, where I grew up. When I was about 10, I inherited, I inherited an ancient bicycle from my cousin. It was this rickety old three-speed rally with ball tires and no brakes to speak of. It needed a lot of care to get it going, and in fact, it took endless tinkering to make it hum. And you all, as, as part of the STEM world, would agree all machines should hum, right? So I could not pay for repairs as a kid, so the man at the bicycle shop down the street from my apartment building taught me how to fix my bike. If I needed parts, he let me have them in exchange for my labor helping him fix other people's bikes. Next door to the bike shop was an electrician's shop. I wanted a bike lamp, so the electrician taught me how to wire up a dynamo. Do any of you know what a dynamo is? It's an electric device that, get, that works for mechanical work. You pedal your bicycle and the lamp lights up. These two men in an urban shanty town who had little formal education themselves probably never thought of themselves as teachers or educators. And yet they taught me electronics and mechanical skills that I never could have achieved in school at that age. A little over a decade later, I was a new graduate student at MIT interviewing to work with Rainer Weiss one of the co-founders of LIGO. I started out the conversation by telling Ray about all the fancy classes that I had just taken in physics. Ray was completely unimpressed until I told him I knew how to fix bicycles. I joined the quest to detect gravitational waves that day. So, Now, I don't want to leave the impression that school is not important. It is. But even in school, learning can come in unexpected places. My high school chemistry teacher, Mr. Ranjit, would allow me to go to the lab during recess and after hours to make creative chemical concoctions. In those hours, I learned to make stink bombs, colorful fireworks, and even some explosive reactions that would really make any uh, less adventurous teacher cringe. But not Mr. Ranjit. As a former student activist and freedom fighter in his native Sri Lanka, he had been around a few explosions and also knew a recipe or two. These escapades sparked my lifelong exp interest in exploring in the lab. They also shaped me as a teacher and a, and a researcher. Along with my students, I have learned to explore the unknown, to take risks and pay attention to fail. Quite a lot, actually. Even in failure, I've learned that clever ideas can bail us out of the messiest pickles. And in fact, the messiest fickle, pickles are also the source of incredible creativity. So never be afraid of a messy pickle. <laughs> I've also learned that clever ideas are everywhere. And I really do mean everywhere. That may be one of the profoundest lessons I've learned outside the classroom. All around us, look around each of you to your neighbors, there is untapped brilliance 
that does not find expression due to lack of opportunity and due to our own myopic ideas. Ingenuity and excellence are all around us. We just need to look with our eyes wide open. And we will never achieve our full potential for success if we don't bring into our institutions the tremendous talents among people who may be very different than ourselves. Look, look, as a scientist, I use math and equations to guide my work in the lab and my understanding of nature. But there is a principle that has guided me more than any other, and ironically, it is represented by an equation that is mathematically quite incorrect. It is the Buddhist principle that we all are one. For humans on this planet, that would mean seven billion of us equal to one. Yes, the math does not add up, but we all are one, and the oneer we are, the better we will all be together. That was certainly true for the discovery of gravitational waves, which required collective ingenuity and teamwork. It required unwavering focus in the face of many, many, many failures over many, many, many years. We had to believe that the impossible could be done, and we had to persuade others that it could be done too. It was implausible that we would succeed, and yet we did. How did we do it? How did we sustain an effort of hundreds of scientists over several decades? Well, at least in some measure, we got there because leaders like Ray Weiss led the te a talented team with love. Love of the people we worked with, love of the technologies we were inventing, love of the science we were collectively chasing. It was a caring and inclusive environment that made us, all of us, whoever we were, valued in a, uh, members of a high-performing team, focused on a shared dream, on achieving our very own mission impossible. So I have a wish for you. I hope that in your careers, each and every one of you will experience the oneness of teamwork and the euphoria of breakthrough, and that you'll hang on to the lure of those even when the daily struggles seem overwhelming. It can happen to every one of you, and I hope it does. If you take this extraordinary education you've received and combine it with the principles of oneness, integrity, and kindness in everything you do, if you collaborate, if you promote people others and other, who have walked different journeys than your own, if you stand up to the forces that destroy equal opportunity for everyone, you will change the world. If you embrace difference, you might run into a person like me. I'm told I'm an outlier, sometimes called a unicorn, a mythical creature that is rare and may only sometimes be spotted. Why would that be? Why am I a unicorn? Perhaps because I'm a physicist at MIT. Perhaps because I grew up on the other side of the planet. I am an immigrant from a majority Muslim country. I am queer. This unlikely combination of identities is important to acknowledge at a time when immigrants, women, people of color, LGBTQ people, Muslims, and even the fact-based community are under attack. <laughs> My parents did not have the opportunity to go to college. There must be parents out there among you who also did not. But they took on the financial hardships that allowed my sister and me to attend an elite private school, and then an incredible financial aid package allowed me to enroll at Wellesley College here in the U.S. That scholarship changed the course of my life more than any other event. As an undergraduate, I worked almost full-time to pay my family contribution component of my financial aid package. I slept through many classes. I slept through 
many classes, I washed many pots and pans in the food service kitchens, and I shelved many books in the library. But at the end of my first year in college, I found my way to a research lab. And there was an awakening for me. I was amazed that I could be paid to do what I loved. And I still get paid to do what I love. I wake up every morning marveling at that incredible reality. And that brings me to the obligatory piece of advice that's required of all commencement addresses. So sit up. <laughs> and here's my advice to you. Do what you love, and you will not work a day in your life. But before you take my story as proof that our system is perfect, let me say that to do what we love is a rare privilege, much too rare. The individual opportunities and openings that came my way mattered a great deal, and they made a huge difference in my life. I'm one of the lucky few who managed to grab the opportunities that came my way. But unless we address the many structural barriers and make systemic change, only a handful of unicorns, the rare outliers, will find their way to success. In our institutions, our jobs, our communities, we can do better, we must do better, and I know you will do better. At a time when tribalism is on the rise, as the gap between rich and poor grows ever wider, as the health of our beautiful planet and our home is more threatened than ever, your generation is going to fix all of that. I hope you will use your education to be a force for good always. Congratulations, class of 2018 at Harvey Mudd College, and thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Mavalavala. That was terrific, and I appreciate your story, your research, your inspiration. And now to the purpose we are gathered here today. Friday, the Board of Trustees received from the faculty recommendations for uh, the granting of degrees to members of the class of 2018. The Board of Trustees unanimously approved that, those recommendations. And now I'd like to ask Lisa Sullivan to step forward and present the class of 2018. All right. Will the Bachelor of Science degree candidates of the class of 2018 please rise? Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the faculty of Harvey Mudd College, it is my great pleasure to present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Science. And now, upon the recommendation of the faculty and with the unanimous approval of the Board of Trustees, it's my privilege to grant upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. Owen Morrison. <laughs> David Porterfield Adams IV. <laughs> James Michael Adams.
Anhun Bailey An. Samantha Parker Andow. Evan Atchison. William Hill Balliet. Alejandro Enrique Baptista. Caitlin Marie Barnes. Lakshmi Bhattachari. Amberly Noel Bogus. Jeb Bearer. <laughs> Carla Joy Becker. <laughs> Kevin Shimba Binkson. Viviana Bermudez Reyes. Andrew Mather Bishop. Stetson Samuel Bost. Lucius Eden James Bynum. <laughs> Augustine Laws Calloway. <laughs> Elijah Brazil Carbonaro. Lupe Carlos the Fourth Jason Ross Kassar Caitlin Ellen Cash Catherine Elise Casella. Brenda Veronica Castro. Chloe May Chan. Brian Chaucer Cheng. <laughs> Sally Cheng. <laughs> David Chu. Austin Takeo Chun. Connor Colomb. JC Shea Conniff.
Julia Cosma. Camille Karen Kroll. Duncan Crowley. Teresa X. Depre. Grace Deal. <laughs> Philip DiGiacomo. <laughs> Maura Dillon. Emily Jane Dorsey. Alejandro Echeverria. Zachary Corwin Evans. Aman Fatapuria. <laughs> Tiffany Michelle Fong. <laughs> Juliet Foreman. Sasha Spielberg Friedrich. Marissa A. G. Ryan Gibbs. Jose Godinez. Christine Elizabeth Goins. Alex Goldstein. Daniel Gorelick. <laughs> Nicholas Gott. <laughs> Sophie Marie Graff. Rilke Griffin Hare. Sarah Lau Hale. Jennifer Havens. Yashas Gajanana Hegde. Christopher Richard Hoyt. Lauren Hu.
Amy Huang. Kevin W. Huang. Lam Fuk Win. Daniel Dunning Wu Johnson. Kimberly Jolie. Rebecca Grace Justice. Pratyas Tanun Kapoor. Hamza Khan. Hamza Imtiaz Khan. Daniel King. Daniel King. That was Daniel King. <laughs> huh? Isabel Rebecca King. Varsha Kishore. <laughs> Jacob Canego. <laughs> Marina Canidal. Manu Kondipi. <laughs> Ramita Kondipudi. <laughs> Christopher R. Cochera. Ragini Kotari. <laughs> Rachel Kretsch. <laughs> Carissa Crone. Jonathan G. Kupfer. <laughs> David Soimon Kwan. <laughs> Doran Lan. Emily Margaret Lane. <laughs> Michelle K. Lanterman. <laughs> Justin Lau.
Bella Lee. Marissa Rachel Lee. Aurora Jade Leeson. Lillian Mao Leung. Christine Teresa Lee. Melinda Hui Lee Lim. Judy Lin. Richard Arthur Liu. William Alexander Eisler Lloyd. Zyra Priscilla Lobo. Kemper Ludlow. Jessica Ann Lupano. Lupe McIntosh. Sean Mari. Anjanea Malpani. <laughs> Isabel Ann Martos Repeth. <laughs> Bryce McLaughlin. Julio Alejandro Medina. <laughs> Bailey Alexandra Meyer. <laughs> Spencer Michaels. Geneva Elise Miller. Joshua Miller. Thomas Morgan Witz. Bryce D. Murley. <laughs> Brendan Armin Murrin. <laughs> Grant Patrick Murray.
M. Sangeeta Naidu. Tian An Nyak Win. Richard J. Nee. James W. Palmer. Ricky Pan. Renata Paramastri. Gabriel Pun. Wen Kai Chin. Catherine Inhi Reed. Arthur Reyes. Jasmine May Rizko. Arch Stewart Robison. Anthony Rom. Jacob W. Rosalski. <laughs> Jacob Roth. <laughs> Gabriel Lees Rubin. Nicholas Skakowski. <laughs> Shally Sommer. <laughs> Patrick George Skillis. Anna R. Schiff. Annalise Schweikart. Kyla Yoland Scott. Sarah J. Sedke. <laughs> Kofi Yamfasa Sechi Apia. Preeti Sashadri. (laughs) 
Zachary Lee Shatler. Adam Shaw. Amelia Louise Shepherd. Yasu Shamalis. Austin June Shin. Sarah Silcox. Jennifer Pearl Smith. Daniel Jacob Sonner. Srinidhi Srinivasan. Teal Standard. Nachanan Suesam. Drew Thomas Semi. Kyle Christopher Suver. Abby Nicole Tisdale. Reiko Tojo. Kim Tron. Nicholas Lee True. Alexandre Trudeau. Charles Van Eyck. Omar Velasquez. Mackenzie Vignal. Jesus Fiegas. <laughs> Luis Fiorneri. Angelica Verretta. <laughs> Kama Akeem Waller.
Florence Joanne Walsh. Jessica Wang. Jopei Wong. Sunyan Wong. Nancy Wei. Josephine Wong. Jane Hong Wu. Shen Chen Ji. Michaela Linda Yaman. <laughs> Cynthia Yan. <laughs> Dai Peng Yang. Enoch Ya <laughs> Eileen Zhang <laughs> Daniel Zhang Zhenggan Zhang. <laughs> Angela S. Zhao. <laughs> Zhou Wai Wei. Tina L. Zhu. <laughs> Lee Michelle Norgard. Congratulations to the HMC class of 2018. The graduates we honor today have achieved a new status at the college, HMC alumni. And here to welcome you to that amazing group is David Sonner, class of 1980, parent of a student in the class of 2018, and also uncle of a student in the class of 2018. And David is president of the Alumni Association.
Welcome, David. It's with great pleasure that I welcome the class of 2018 into the Alumni Association of Harvey Mudd College. Con Congratulations on your graduation and on your transition today from students to alumni. My new fellow alumni. I have some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the good news. Over many decades, I've talked with many alumni, and if their experiences are any guide, you'll find that MUD prepared you extremely well for your future professional life. That's a big part of the reason why MUD alumni are so successful. In your time at MUD, you've learned many things in your classes, but equally important, you've learned many associated skills. Those skills include the ability to get along with others while working collaboratively on a project, the ability to manage your time in a complex environment, and the ability to quickly and efficiently master a new subject. In fact, many alumni say that the most important thing they got out of MUD was the confidence that they could master any subject if they had the time and the will. With the passage of time, I'm confident that you will increasingly value your MUD education which has led many alumni before you into successful and rewarding careers that did, some of them, did, including careers that did not exist while, while they were students. In your future personal life, there will be times of joy and happiness, as well as hard times with loss and sorrow. It's difficult to be well prepared for the hard times in your future personal life. But in your future professional life, I know that you're already extremely well prepared. MUD alumni have taught at the uh, best public and private inst uh, universities. They've served in government. They've worked in the best corporations and in industry. Many of them sa have said that they were extremely well prepared for their professional lives in academia, government, and industry. Many of them also have said that they often worked hard after MUD, sometimes as hard as they did at MUD, but that no professional job was harder than MUD. Based on what I saw less than two weeks ago when you gave talks and fielded difficult questions at your projects day and presentation days, I know that you are as well prepared for your professional lives as earlier alumni were for theirs. So that's the good news. What's the bad news? The bad news is in your future, there's no place like mud. When you arrived at MUD, you probably discovered that it was a lot easier to make friends than you imagined. Because there were many smart people like you at MUD who shared many of your interests and passions. When you venture into the world beyond MUD, it probably won't be as easy to find people like that. Equally important, the friendships you made at MUD probably are close ones. Many alumni say that the MUD friendship, that MUD friendships are a little like the close friendships forged in other groups that go through intense experiences together. Like many alumni before you, you worked together on many difficult assignments and in the process you learned many things that you'll find useful in life. But probably what you'll value the most are the close friendships forged during your MUD experiences together. Many MUD alumni will tell you, looking back on their lives, that there's no place like MUD for making lots of new and close friends. Many of your friendships will last a lifetime if you work to keep them. Of course, as you go through the adventure of life, you'll continue to make friends. As you extend your network of friends, please include alumni. When I graduated from Harvey MUD College 38 years ago, I thought that most alumni would be too old for me to befriend them or vice versa. I thought that my only alumni friends would be the people I had met while I was a student. I was wrong about that. Over the years, I've made many alumni friends from a wide range of ages. You too soon will discover that age becomes much less important after college. Please don't make my mistake. 
Don't wait to seek out friendships with alumni from a wide range of ages. In seeking out new alumni friends, you'll discover that older and younger MUD alumni often help each other. Older alumni often help younger alumni get good jobs and quickly climb the career ladder. They often mentor younger alumni. In exchange, older alumni get, often get smart, capable, and extremely productive younger alumni to work in their organizations. Because of this symbiotic relationship, it's common to see MUD alumni clustered in organizations. Currently, there are about 7,000 MUD alumni. Our Alumni Association provides many ways for older and younger alumni to meet, including through social networking and various alumni events. Our biggest alumni event is Alumni Weekend, which is held on campus every spring. It's a chance for you to reconnect with professors and classmates, but it's also a chance for you to meet alumni from other classes. Among our other alumni events, we've watched concerts in the park in Chicago and solar eclipses from inside the path of totality. We've gone whale watching in Monterey Bay and on learning trips through the Sierras with a geologist. We've traveled to the Galapagos Islands and to Antarctica. Some of you might be a little bit shy, but the reward for participating in our alumni events is well worth the effort. It's a great way to begin new friendships with your fellow alumni. You're now a member of our alumni family, so please come to our alumni events when you're able to. Life's transitions, like today's graduation from Harvey Mudd College, can be exciting and a little scary because you don't know what the future holds. But please believe me, like thousands of alumni before you, you are extremely well prepared for your future. So try to enjoy your life and remember to focus on the people in it, including your family and also your fellow MUD alumni as you embark on your next great adventure. Thank you. So I'd like to start by both congratulating all the mothers here and also apologizing that once again, if you're the mother of somebody associated with Harvey Mudd College, you're probably here instead of celebrating at home. On the other hand, celebrating the graduated, graduation of the class of 2018 is also a pretty wonderful way to spend Mother's Day. I know I'm super happy doing it. This academic year has been one full of hard work, learning, healing, and accomplishments. In September, we were thrilled to learn we had been chosen as one of seven institutions to receive the Academic Leadership Award of $500,000 from the Carnegie Corporation. The award has funded many efforts related to diversity, inclusion, equity, and social justice on our campus. I'm especially happy about our ability to support many faculty and students working on social justice related research in the coming summer and two social justice clinics in the coming year. Throughout the year, a major focus has been a thoroughgoing re-examination of the core curriculum. After an extensive self-study that involved every constituency on campus, we've adopted a, sort of learning, a set of learning objectives for the HMC core that not only includes the development of an excellent technical toolkit, but also the goal of nurturing our students' intellectual curiosity and joy of learning. This summer, faculty and others are moving forward with proposals for a core that will likely unfold in 2020. This process has been wonderfully led throughout by Professor Tom Donnelly. Okay, he's very modest. It's hard to get him to stand up. But I'd also like to mention uh, the other members of the core review planning team 
which has been known as the Crypt. I'm pretty sure that group worked long and hard to find a title that would result in the Crypt. The members also included ABOG President David Sonner, whom you just heard from. Hold your applause until I get through them all. ASHMIC Res representatives Marissa Lee, class of 2018, and Julia Wang, who is uh, president of ASHMIC. <coughs> Our director of institutional research, Laura Paluki blake and professors Erica Dyson, Nancy Lape, and Ron Libeskind hadas And this spring, Professors Francis Sue and Kathleen Van Hebelen and HMC student Natalie Catanago joined the core revision committee. And they will be continuing to work over the summer. And uh, Professor Donnelly's role is being taken over by Professor Ben Wiederman, who will become the core curriculum director um, for the coming year. So let's give a round of applause to that group of people as well. So next, I would like to take a moment to remember Tristan Witte, a member of the class of 2018 who dried, died in a tragic car accident almost two years ago, July 2016. Over the past few days, we've been celebrating Tristan's memory in various ways. His family funded the creation of the Shibby Theater in the Platt living room, and its inauguration was held a week ago with the showing of Anchorman, one of Tristan's favorite movies. Then, and yesterday at lunch, we were treated to the mudslide ice cream. This is a flavor that uh, Tristan created. I know that pretty much every person here has been thinking about Tristan and how much we wish that he were with us to celebrate this graduation today. But I think the most important thing is that we keep Tristan alive in our memories. He may have left the planet in his human state, but he is with us and will continue to be with us as we move forward. And I feel particularly lucky that Tristan's family, I did a painting of Tristan for his family, and they did a print of the painting and it's hanging in the president's office. And it makes, means that I think about Tristan pretty much every day. And now, just a few words for our graduates. You are amazing. <laughs> the reason every single person who works at Harvey Mudd College, serves on the board, serves on ABOG, our Alumni Association Board of Governors. The reason we all do it, because we find our students the most inspiring people we've encountered in our lives. And we care more about the education and personal growth of these individuals than anything else. And I have never been at an institution that had such amazing students and cared so much about their students. We feel incredibly lucky to have had you with us for the past four year, more years. And for a few, Art, I'm thinking of you, uh, maybe an extra year as well. We are so proud of what you have accomplished. Your achievements in research, clinics, competitions, and national awards are incredible. But even more incredible are how you have grown as human beings, how you have cared for each other, how you have built relationships across the college, how you have demonstrated what wonderful human beings you are, and you will have a huge impact on the world. Your commitment to helping each other succeed to understanding the impact of your work on society while preserving an incredible sense of humor and humility are inspiring. 
whether your next step is graduate school, industry, travel, or simply some time for rest and recovery, that's me, you will bring creativity and joy to those around you. Ladies and gentlemen, that completes the 60th annual commencement ceremony of Harvey Mudd College. Will the audience please remain standing and allow the academic procession to exit the site to the back of the tent that way. <laughs>